Have fun, Robert. Hey, thank you. Hey, You're Mr. my friend from Colorado. <laughs> yeah. I was having trouble getting into my room, Sherry. Why? I don't know. I maybe I well, I had somebody in doing a reading and I got get kicked somewhere else and then I got kicked out completely. <laughs> well, Vicky, Vicky, what's going on with the rooms tonight? So anyway, I can't even get back into my room. Am I gonna give a talk now? Hold on one second. Vicky, what's going on with the rooms tonight? Nothing. Nothing. That's right. yeah. The rooms are wide open. Uh, yes, I've had a couple of complaints that people got bumped out of the rooms tonight as well. Yeah, I was given yeah, a some, reading and I never the room, but now it's fine. Yeah, and Each now person. I don't even know how to get back into my room. We'll move you back in there, Robert. I don't understand oh. what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Welcome, um, Robert. Robert is a spirit oh, channel yeah. who, who has arrived from Colorado the past couple of weeks. He went from Santa Claus to um, training himself down. He's a channel teacher, coach, spiritual advisor, or energy reader, card, card reader, palm reader, and intuitive master. He is um, going to be talking to us about uh, knowing who your soul is. And he really is known as a spirit or a reader. So welcome, Robert. Thank you. It's so good to be here once again. I think this is my third time and uh, it's the 21st. So that comes right. out to a three. So three is our lucky number. I was going to talk about today. I was going to talk about manifestation. I was going to talk about, I can talk about your aura and how that relates to that and ask questions and get some information from the participants. But primarily, this is kind of the time of the year that we start to look at what we really believe that we can bring forward in ourselves, in our purposes, in our careers, in our ways that we touch other people's lives, uh, and how we really want to shift our own lives. There's lots of understandings today, lots of teachings coming out about manifestation, uh, because it's kind of the evolution of humanity that the collective humanity is going to be ready to understand it and to practice it. Back in the beginning of civilization, people could not learn about manifestation because they had so many dark thoughts and so many dark thinkings that if they knew the techniques of manifestation, they would use that to harm others or themselves or just dis disrupt the chaotic energy. And even today, as you start to see some people getting to practice manifestation, they don't quite understand how to do it or they're not using it for the highest reasons. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And then, of course, uh, a lot of uh, the understandings about the nature of life. We look at we're on this earth plane and we watch how life itself is very natural. We watch the natural way life is. It starts out in the beginning of the, what we call a year, but in the deep winter time, a lot of our calendar relates to the cycles of life and the cycles of years. So that we see that the winter time, everything is barren, the uh, cold weather, nothing is growing. And part of our internal soul process is very similar. We're in kind of a, we go through different cycles of being quieter. We have nothing really going on. Sometimes we're in a kind of a time that we need to tear down. If you look at the crops you grow last year and then you harvest them and then you're left with the stalks and the uh, debris of the old growth, you have to tear that down or trim it back. A lot of great gardeners learn how to trim back their perennials so that they can grow again. And so part of the process of this time and a little bit of what you may have been contemplating is how do you tear down the old? How do you get rid of things that are uh, haven't really uh, served you or feel like you've outgrown them or they're just not quite right? And the best way to do that is to think of yourself and your inner mind as a garden and think of yourself within your inner mind, you are the garden. And then within that, you look at what is the belief systems, the attitudes, the, the ideas that you have about yourself that you're really ready to uh, let go of. 
maybe you can think that you were somewhat happy with uh, a particular part of your growth uh, that you did last year. There was a good amount of growth that you did and you can honor and respect the harvest and the growth that you had last year and what maybe you want to grow more of next year. There are many, many things that we can look at in our inner life at this time because the winter time is the time for that inner perspective look, uh, in going within yourself, trying to find out what's really going on inside your mind. And as you find that out, as you look within yourself, then you get to set some intentions. And the beginning of this year is a good time. Many of you that spiritually have done some practices know what it means to set a spiritual intention. And this is kind of what you would call like the seed where you grow a seed and the seed then becomes the tiny little germinated sprout that comes out of the ground. And then you start to look at that little sprout and you have to cultivate it and it has to start to grow. And as it grows then throughout the coming of March and April, it gets stronger and bigger. And then of course the full season, it starts to completely grow into a strong sprout and then eventually produces fruit. A lot of our manifestation ideas within our own being are very, very similar. And this relates to the idea that as we manifest, we have to look at our thoughts, look what's growing in our inner mind, look how we can keep it growing, and look at what also too may be what's preventing it from growing. A lot of the natural way to manifest is to understand very much the very similar laws of creating a business where you set your business intention, you set your goals, and then you start to find out that something's blocking you, some obstacle is happening. It's preventing you from reaching where you wanna be. Or maybe you might be understanding that in your mind, you're not realistic. You're trying to make something grow too fast or you're not in a right idea. In the modern uh, United States of America, everybody's for their win the lottery, get the quick fix, make something happen instantly, become an instant millionaire, get the girlfriend and happy love all at once. <laughs> right? And so we don't quite always understand the natural process of growing, developing, and unfolding our gifts, our abilities. Now, in the idea of manifestation too, many people, when they're beginners, they start with the idea of manifesting things. They want to manifest the car, they want to get the house, they want to get the new things. And that's good because it starts in the beginning process, teaches them that they can manifest, that their mind does have power, that they can grow something that they want to experience. But as you get a little bit more developed in your powers to manifest, you start to realize, you start to understand that you're not here just to manifest things. You're not just here to get something that you think you want. You're here to use your mind for higher creations, higher purposes, higher ways to contribute not only to others, but to the sense of what your own soul development is really about. I teach a lot of people how to know your soul. And when you understand that you get to know your soul more than your personal self, and then you start to integrate your soul into your personal self, the soul self is taking over. And that's a growth process too. So we really want to embrace that our manifestations and our understanding of life is how we grow or cultivate or come into a certain way. You can come into the knowledge that in your soul growth, you may want to develop more of your manifestation powers by developing your third eye and learning how to hold your mind in the third eye and contemplate what you really want. The ability to quiet the mind, learn to contemplate, hold a particular thought, increases the ability for that thought to be realized by the spirit. And then the more you contemplate a thought, the more that thought grows. But the point I was making that I wanna emphasize is how important it is for you to take your time, learn to develop your internal self, understanding your inner bodies, understand the thoughts and things that prevent you from being who you really want to be. And a big part of spiritual growth is to remove some of the blocks, some of the fear, some of the internal lower minded thinking that you do. Remove those type of thoughts and feel like it would be like a rock in the middle of your garden or a weed that you learn how to cultivate out. 
And it's not that you have to be critical of yourself or upset with yourself because you have these thoughts. And some of these thoughts actually relate to your soul family. They relate to other parts of your soul. They relate to the collective consciousness. So anytime you see yourself removing a dark thought, a negative thought, something that you don't like that's in your way, just think that you pull it out and throw it deep down in another part of the universe, get it out of your inner aura, and then it's clear and clean and removed. That allows more space for you to contemplate and think about the true thoughts that you want to cultivate and grow. And then the more you grow these thoughts and share them with the universe, the universe itself participates with you and does its part. Everything in the universe is in cooperation with everything and everything is in harmony with everything. The only thing that's out of harmony in the universe is the human lower mind that gets into a negative dark thinking process and develops fear in their imagination. The beautiful thing about being human is that we have an incredible imagination and our imagination is here to service in our creative processes but our imagination also really works against us because it creates a lot of fear. You see this in the political arena where all the people are creating conspiracy theories and they're teaching people to be afraid because the mind develops this fear. And then if it holds on to these fears, it's manifesting fear thought. And that's what we've seen in this culture. A lot of fear thought is manifesting and a lot of people are living in the beliefs of the fear. So they're cultivating their fear thinking. But we as spiritual light beings, us people that are learning to discern and work, we cultivate our inner mind, we cultivate our emotions and our chakras, and we clear out the things that don't really serve us. We clear out the dark thoughts, and we are able to distinguish those dark thoughts and clear them out. And then we are able to make room for the true thoughts that we want to keep holding to grow. And then as you really feel the thoughts that you are thinking are offered to the universe, and they are shared with the universe. The universe takes your pure thoughts, your pure ideas, reflects it back to you and gets a complete circle of helping you manifest. The higher angels and beings and light workers that are working with you can feel your thoughts, see your vibrations, hear what you're asking for. And if they're pure and true and to your highest good, they will help you manifest those thoughts. And this is where it's really quite fun because you get to be like a little child you don't really know how it's going to happen. You don't know when it's going to happen, but you see that some of your thoughts are coming around and manifesting. And that is the full circle because you've completed the cycle of growth. You've gone from the seed to the sale. You've gone to the full manifestation of the fruit. And in that process that happens within your inner mind, that's where the universe meets you and adjusts the mirror of time and space to show you your manifestations. And it's a wonderful process. I've been practicing it for 35 years. I can manifest anything that's really for my highest good. And when there's something that I don't manifest, I know I'm making a big mistake and I'm trying to manifest something that's not for my highest good. <laughs> so the process of manifestation works 100%. And many, many teachings are, are out about it. But I'm sharing this with you today because I just want you to think of the natural laws of the universe how you are a human being and that you're supposed to work with the natural ways things grow and keep working within yourself to see it going from one to nine. That's a complete cycle. And as you understand the different cycles of your own life, you'll see that your manifestations are relating to your cycles. And as things cycle around and manifest, then you'll see that, oh, this cycle happened a little bit quicker. I was able to collapse time or what I was asking for was met by the universe in a way that didn't have or made the cycle go a little faster. But mostly you'll find you'll have an innate natural cycle within your own being and things will go accordingly, grow accordingly to how you've learned your own internal natural cycle. And this is a part of the trust aspect of creating because we have to really learn to trust our, our manifestations. The biggest problem that we often do is when we're manifesting, we shout out, God, did you hear me? Spirit, did you hear my request? And then we think maybe spirit didn't. And then we doubt our own thoughts that we're trying to manifest. And then they become blocked. So that's just one of the traps that happens when you're attempting to manifest. Your own mind gets in your way of your manifestations and you don't trust the universe. 
you don't trust the cycles of the manifestation. So always remember that if something's not manifesting, call upon divine timing, call upon the higher will for the greater good, and then trust what growth cycle you really need to be in because your own growth cycle means that some more inner work is having to occur for you to manifest the greater qualities that you want. I've been just talking away on my principles and teachings and ideas because that's what I do sometimes. So if anyone out there has a question and can tune in and ask something, maybe unmute yourself. I'd be happy to share more of these ideas with the collective group who's interested. Anyone have an idea or something you want to ask or share? Looks like I'm thinking everybody's unmuted. Hi, Robert. Hello. I'm Yana. Yes, hi, Yana. Hi. Um, so wanted to ask you two things. How does somebody know uh, where, where to get their mind in the right place? How do you prepare yourself to start focusing on that intention? That's a very good question because you want to decide at the beginning of this time of the year. This is why you often see a lot of New Year's resolutions and everybody wanting to set some new goals. It's a great new time for you to feel the excitement of the new creations that you can start to manifest. And then you set a clear intention. Now, part of the understanding of setting a very clear intention or a very sincere purpose is to get into your heart chakra. If you center yourself into your true heart chakra and really listen to your self-love and your sense of greater purpose for this new cycle, then there will be an asking that you can do. You might ask for something and then feel deep into your own heart center and you get a feeling that that feels right. Does that feel true to you? Does that feel wise for you, for you to want to plant that seed, to manifest that desire, to work upon it and then see it cultivated and, and develop? So as you get very familiar with your heart chakra, use your deep centered self, which is the connection with your love, your soul self, and then your soul love self will say yes to your desire, yes to the idea of what you want to manifest. Does that help you? Yes, thank you so much. And to get into that place of focus, do you meditate first for how many minutes and then go right to the intention? Well, the idea is to... Get yourself as quiet as possible. Now, a lot of people in their beginning practices feel that their mind has got a lot of chatter going on, a lot of things that uh, disrupt their thinking. And uh, instead of trying to get a very solid, quiet mind, which takes years to develop, it's very important for you to do some chanting or to feel like your thoughts are just flowing like a river. It's perfectly okay for your thoughts to just be flowing on by and still having some mind chatter. The only problem that's the difference between meditation and getting caught up in your thoughts is you react to your thoughts instead of letting them pass on by. When they just kind of pass on out of your mind in a stream of thoughts and you're not giving any thought any power, then that is uh, the same thing as clearing your mind. And then you can start moving your attention to a single point, your third eye, your throat chakra, your heart chakra. You can even go down to your tailbone, uh, right down to the tip of your tailbone and concentrate upon that. You could concentrate even on a candle flame or a flower, but anything that you concentrate on and focus your intention on for a while, that's where you start to get the clear thinking. And that's where you start to develop an absolute pure thought that then turns into, it turns into uh, a seed, it turns into a deep contemplation and a strong intention. Thank you so much, Robert. The deeper you are able to hold that thought now, like I am here to manifest love, or I am here to manifest joy, or I am here to have my desires and my powers be greater so I can accomplish more, the more you can continue to hold that thought uh, for sometimes uh, enjoy it instead of watching an hour TV program, see if you can just chant for an hour or deepen a thought of I'm love or think of everything that you can love in your life for as long as you possibly can. And the longer and longer that contemplation occurs, the more power that you're growing that intention. And then when that tension like grows into a certain place that it reaches out deep in the universe, the universe responds to you. Just remember that every time you're really truly responding out into the universe, like giving yourself to the whole universe, like touching the whole sky, like putting yourself out to everything, 
that universal feeling will respond right back to you. And the universal love self is always with you, always listening, always ready to help you. All you have to do is really want to truly, truly reach out to the spirit and feel you're held embraced by that higher beingness, however you want to call it, and then know and be certain it will respond back to you. It will also constantly help you remove the dark thoughts you have that are blocking your manifestations. It'll also constantly help adjust you to show you where you're off. So you'll always get the help you need if you're true to your desires to, uh, the important thing to understand, a lot of people, they misunderstand manifestation as a wanting. There is a difference between, and this is probably another whole talk, but there's a huge difference between wanting something and um, desiring something from your soul self. Desire is always manifest, but wanting is usually an idea of lack. And many people want certain things, but they're saying to the universe, lack, 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 I don't have it, I, I want it. But the lack is a statement of uh, a weed that needs to be pulled out. So don't keep wanting things, come to the place of your core being and come from desire Know that the desire is a guarantee that what you're absolutely asking from, and it's a, of the Father, it's of your true nature. If you're coming from desire, it's a guarantee. It's a law of the universe. It has to manifest as you get clear how it serves yourself and all those around you. Any other questions? Ooh, that was good. Down. That was that was good. good. <laughs> I, have, I have something, <laughs> Robert. Hello. I know I just got away. Hi, is that Jennifer? Hi. Um, hi, Jennifer. Hi, how are you? Um, I think what and what I've been told in regards to manifesting, one of the key things is letting go. Also, once you put your thought out there, isn't it just letting go and believing that it's going to come true? And I think one of my challenges has been surrendering. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm not well, thinking it's about always, it over and over and over, you know, I keep it's, it. You can think about it over and over and over again, as long as you're certain, 100% certain it will manifest. And then it is kind of a tricky part of your learning of what is, what is your trust and your faith and you're knowing you're holding the right thought. And mm -hmm. then what is really being given to the universe to be done for you. So that just is a sense of lots of practice and lots of working on it. And then eventually you get into that place where you're working so well with the universe, they're the universal beings around you that you're helping, they'll guide and show you and you get trained. And then you get to the place, you got the experience of how it works for you down because it's your unique practice that it works for you. And then you keep working in it and then you see more and more of what you ask for manifest. Okay. So it's, a, it's always just a sense of knowing, how old are you? How old am I? Yeah. 55. <laughs> Perfect. See, you've been practicing for quite a while, haven't you? I have, yes. Yes, you've been practicing a lot, and there's lots more uh, feeling that you're successful. You know you're successful. You have a good faith in what you're doing, and now it's just perfecting these practices. And then you feel like how successful you are, and then keep being that successful self, and then you'll know when to let go and then when to hold on to a thought. You know, the, you, the plant has to be planted in the ground. It can't be pulled out of the ground. <laughs> yeah. And a lot of people, when they love something, they say, let go. And it feels like loss and not getting what they want. So mm -hmm. letting go is a tricky idea. And you have to know what you're really letting go of. And it can't be a feeling of losing something if you let go. Uh, so it is a feeling that you and the spirit are one. And whatever you're offering to the spirit is really you're giving to yourself because you and your true self are one. And so when you give something to the spirit and give it away, think you're really giving it to yourself. And then your true self is gonna help you even more. Perfect, I love it, thank you very then much. Then letting go, letting go. But I can tell you've been manifesting lots of things. You get most everything that's truly for your highest good and just keep perfecting your practices. Thank you, thank you very you're, much. You're welcome. Any Beautiful. other questions? How are we let's, doing on time there, Sherry? Now let's, let's bring that into your room at this point for additional Q&A. Okay, and that bring, so I can get back into my room. Thank yeah, you. Um, but before we do that, you'll do your door prize. And um, then we'll bring out Julian. And then we're going to bring out the panel. 
and yeah. uh, ask all the panels. So we're just being a little flexible with time because we did have a cancellation. So we had an extra 30 minutes to spread time out today. So, oh, wonderful. So we didn't have a lot of gaps. Um, so we're just kind of going with it. So we're just running a little bit behind in time. So Robert, what is your door prize giveaway? And I want everyone to write in the chat their, uh, what your number. In, yeah, in, anybody, I've got my number, but anybody that wants to uh, Win. you know, who wins, the, wins, who wins the door prize gets 20 minute reading with me and uh, soul uh, knowledge. And uh, we'll talk about what you really want to create this life, what this year is really about for you and what it will take to make that happen. And, and if a practitioner or vendor is the closest number, then it's between, you guys are gonna have to arrange a trade between you two because we want to offer it to the guests. So anybody in the room, if you want to win a session with Robert, write down your number. Number one through nine. Oh my God, are you still having problems, Jennifer? One, one, E, one. I'm trying to type 11. I can't even type it out. I don't know what's going on. You see, I'm trying to even type out the word. So Jennifer wants 11? Yes. Okay, I'll put that down for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't yeah. know why it's doing that. That's so strange. And it's like one one e one e v. It's like almost like love level. Well, of yeah. Love. Well, I was trying to type out eleven because I was noticing the numbers weren't working for me. I well, don't you were typing the word eleven. Aren't I you? was trying to because it's not letting me. I don't know why everything's coming out in that direction. That's very mm -hmm. strange. So you have a keyboard issue. If you I guess so. Can you type a word? Type no, I was trying to type 11 type and it was word. coming out like that. The type of word, see if you have a pro. Look, word. It's still coming one. You have a keyboard issue. Your That's, keyboard. So, <laughs> That's so odd. I've yeah. never had that problem before. You get one letter at a time. It's like word. Okay, so, okay. <laughs> so everybody. Um, so Robert, you ready to go? Ready to hold up your number? Oh, do I hold it up? I was just gonna say it. It's number seven. Ah, lucky number seven. Uh, Julian got it, but he's a practitioner. However, the and you guys are gonna have to work that out. And the next one is Yana, number eight. Okay. Uh, I'm Julian, so excited, you wanna, Robert. You want to give it? To, <laughs> you you want to give it to her? I did eleven before I knew what his range was but anyway that's, uh, okay. that's okay robert well, I'll be in my so room for the rest of the night so i'll be around so we come, come see me we'll talk I'm happy, I'm happy to be here for anybody who wants to chat and share and julian do you want to change your number to her robert robert, I, robert i'd love to share with you uh anytime any place anywhere yeah. you're well, let's amazing give to, let's give that to yana and then uh we'll, yana we'll yana deserves the world and beyond <laughs> That and girl is amazing. Receive. He's going to learn to receive more. And she's going to become even more amazing with your reading, my friend. Thank you, my thank you. Thank oh, you. Julian, thank you. Why? Because all her S's and all her N's or Y's or what is it? It starts off with the Y. Come on. That's the that's the holy grail right there. Hello. Uh, got a lot of creativity in her soul, that's for sure. Ah, uh, you 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 haven't even met this woman yet. Oh, <laughs> Sherry, Sherry, Sherry has, Sherry's Jennifer, also very special. Nice sharing with you too. So uh, look forward to seeing you sometime. Keep <laughs> believing in yourself. <laughs> All right, everybody. Good night. Talk All to right. you. Bye, Robert. Much love. Much love.